Hello YouTube, this is Mo from Tutorials.eu and welcome to a new C-Shop tutorial. In this tutorial, we will discuss the difference between converting, parsing, and casting in C-Shop. This might be a confusing topic since not a lot of developers actually know the exact difference between the three methods. Also, this might pop up as an interview question. So let's get started. So first, let's talk about casting. What is casting or type casting exactly? Now, to be more technical, casting can be done using a cast expression. A cast expression is used to perform an explicit conversion from one type to another. So let's see an example of a cast expression. Cast expression of the following form performs an explicit conversion from type E to type T. For example, we can cast a float number and convert it into an integer like so. There are many cases where we might need to do a casting like that, for example, to get rid of the floating points. But before we see it in action, let's visit the documentation first. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C-Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C-Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C-Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C-Sharp. So you're going to learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. If we go to the conversions page, to the implicit numeric conversions section, we can see that we can do an implicit numeric conversions from these types to these types. That means that, for example, we can convert from an integer to long, float, or double without providing a cast expression. To understand this better, let's give it a try. All right, in a new console application project, let's look into implicit conversion first. And I want to try and store an integer inside of a float variable. So first, I'm going to define an integer and I'm going to call it my int and I'm going to give it some value. And then I'm going to define a new float. I'm going to call it my float, which will equal to my integer. I want to try and print both of these variables into the console. So console right line my integer and console right line my float. And let's give it a try. And we can see that we were able to store the integer value inside of a float variable without any issue. And this is called implicit conversion. With an implicit conversion, we were able to convert from an integer to a float without providing a cast expression. Because an implicit conversion from an integer to a float exists and is actually allowed, but not vice versa. So let's actually try and do the opposite. I will define an integer. I'm going to call it my value and it will equal to, let's say, 3.4. And we can see that we have an error over here. And the error says, cannot implicitly convert from type float to integer. An explicit conversion exists and it's asking whether we are missing a cast or not. And one of the potential fixes is, is to actually add an explicit cast, like so. So this is a case where an explicit conversion is required. And according to MS-Docs, only an implicit conversion from float to double exists or allowed. So keep that in mind. Now, there are cases where even an explicit conversion does not exist, which means that the compiler doesn't know how to convert from this type to that type. So let's look at this case. Let's say I have a string called data and it equals to some date let's say 1886 and for some reason i need this data to be an integer so i'm going to define a new integer and i'm going to call it converted number and it's going to equal to my data now as you can see of course we have an error and this time the error says cannot implicitly convert from type string to an integer, but it's not asking me whether I'm missing a cast this time. So a natural solution that might come to your mind is that I might be able to cast from a string to an integer using a cast expression like so. 
but unfortunately that doesn't work and the reason is a conversion from a string to an integer does not exist if you think about it while attempting to convert a string to a numeric value a lot of things can go wrong what if the string does not represent a numeric value to begin with or contains special characters or even the number's value is bigger than the type we choose because of that we need a more sophisticated way to do such conversions now I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with at least one of the following methods. The first one is the convert method and we can use it like so. Let me first comment this line out. So I'm going to define the same integer converted number and it's going to equal to the value that is going to be returned by a static method called to end 32 and this method exist in the convert class and I'm gonna give it my data that I find above as you can see there is no errors and just to make sure I'm gonna print my converted number into the console and here is our data now our application will work perfectly if we are controlling the data that we are converting but what if this data is coming from a database or a web API or something and we don't have control over the data that we are receiving so what if our data was actually dog for example if we attempt to run the application this way we will get an exception that says the input string was not in the correct format of course we can work around this problem by wrapping our code with a try catch block and in case our data was in the wrong format then we can simply just catch our exception and here I'm just going to print the exception message into the console now let's give it a try as you can see our application did not crash and instead I got an error message now the other method is called parse and it's a class method that belongs to the respective type that we want to convert our strings into so I'm gonna just copy the code we already wrote over here and instead of convert to end 32 I'm gonna use end.parse now if I run my application you can see that in this case both the convert and the parse method works in a similar fashion so now you might be wondering then what is the difference between parsing and converting the main differences between the convert and the parse methods are the following convert takes an object as an input or an argument where parse takes a string the convert method will never throw an argument null exception if you pass it null as an argument it will simply return the default value for the value type that you are trying to convert to for example 0 for integers or false for a boolean where parse will throw an exception if you pass it null now when it comes to converting strings both the convert and the parse method will do the same thing so in that case I recommend using parse or try parse but if you are dealing with your own custom types then you can simply implement the iConvertible interface to provide your own implementation and use the convert method to convert from other types to your own custom types so if you know other differences between parsing and converting let me know down in the comments below I really hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something new if so please leave a like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.